This one is a biggie. This is this is a biggie. This is a review of the Elkit TU 8600R amplifier. Now it's a 300B amp. That's the tube type. That's that big glass bottle on the top of this amplifier. Actually, there's two of them, right? And uh, yeah, I had a good time working on this review. Now there's so much information to. Uh, give you, and I'm going to start in the beginning, that Elkit is a Japanese company. And they, they put a lot of really very high quality parts into this design. And I'm going to link to their, to their website and uh, you have more detailed information there. But anyway, it's very, very well made. But it is a kit, so you have to do some work with a soldering iron to, to get it all together. And anyway, and the price, by the way, which I'm about to tell you, does not include tubes. So it's a kit. Prices do not include tubes. So you can basically pick the tubes that you want. Now, I didn't use very expensive tubes in this review. The, uh, the, the output tubes, the 300Bs, were Electroharmonics Gold. I think they're about $250 a pair. So as 300B tubes go, it's not a lot of money. And then I also bought some tubes for, the, for this review from uh, Tube Depot. And I bought the, the small signal tubes, the 12AU7 and the 12AX7. And the three of them together, because I wanted to get really good ones, uh, they were Telefunken and RCA, about $130, as I recall. So anyway, not a lot of money, not a little money. Uh, the tube, the, the 300B part is auto bias, so it's really easy to swap out tubes. Once you've built the amplifier, you can pop in 300Bs and don't have to mess around with a meter to make it all happy. So it's, it's well, you could call it an integrated amp because it has a volume control, but it only has one set of inputs, so it's a rather limited uh, integrated amp, but you could use an outboard switching box. But I have a feeling that most people that buy the 8600R will use it as basically as a power amp with a separate preamp, which is basically the way I did it. As you can also might have noticed on the front panel, there's a headphone jack. Headphone, I use it with some headphones. It's not the greatest headphone amplifier, so I wouldn't be buying with that in mind. Um, separate story. No remote control. It's a purely analog device. There's no digital inputs or anything. As I said, there's just one set of inputs, analog RCA input, and that's all she wrote. I should also mention that while I'm reviewing the TU8600R, there's a newer version, the TU8600S. They are very, very similar. The differences are mostly in the output transformer, uh, coupling caps, and a couple of resistors. Um, but the 8600R is still available, so you can pick either one. The differences in price is the new one is about $200 more than this one. This one is $1,780. I haven't heard the 8600S, so I can't really talk about the differences other than what I've heard from my pal Herb Reichert, who reviewed it for Stereophile, and he said the S is slightly more transparent and clear. It is. But I don't have that one here to compare. But what I did have here to compare, ever so briefly, was the last 300B amplifier I reviewed, which was the Felix Arioso 300B. And that one, by the way, is $6,500. And it's made in Poland. And it's, I think, really beautiful in an Eastern European sort of way. It's very understated and black. <laughs> Not a lot of you know bling going on on the Arioso 300B, but it is a different breed of 300B than this one here. The Arioso is more transparent, vivid, clear, and just it just opens up more. There's just this intensely beautiful, clear quality to it that is highly addicting. But it's about three times the price of this one. But this one, the 8600R, is no slouch when it comes to transparency. Now, I did use it with basically two speakers over the course of this review. And that is the uh, Klipsch uh, Cornwall 4, high sensitivity speaker, 102 dB, and also picked on purpose a very low sensitivity speaker, the Graham Chartwell LS6, 87 dB sensitivity. 
So the sound on the Cornwall 4 was highly transparent, but did not ever really sound like a solid state amplifier, even a really good one. To put it in some sort of perspective, a first watt F8 or F7 or a first watt SIT3, those have more power, they do feel more powerful. They're all about 20 watts per channel. They do feel more powerful, meaning more dynamically alive, more kick to them. But this one, the TU8600R, was sweeter, richer, um, more uh, body and soul to the sound. So they're, they're different. It's one of those, they're different, and I like them both, the first watts and the 8600R, for, for different reasons. They're doing different things, different views of Mount Fuji, let's put it that way. I can sense it. I can sense it that some of you are thinking, uh, so Steve, what about the Deckware Zentria, the 2.3 watt per channel little EL84 amp? I know that you're thinking that, right? Well, yes, I love that little amplifier. It's $995, by the way. And that, and it's not a kit. And that one uh, is awfully good. And in some ways, it's kind of like this one. But it doesn't have the, the weight, the solidity of the sound that I was getting from the 8600R. It just feels thinner. There's a word. It, it doesn't have as much grunt to it, not surprisingly. Um, and no, I don't have two uh, Zen triodes here to try them as monos. So I don't, I don't know about how that would compare, really. But I can say that the Zen triode for a little guy, a uh, $1,000 amplifier, sounds also, you know, I, can't, I have to use this word beautiful. It just sounds so right, especially on the Cornwalls. But I've used the, the Zen Triad on so many different speakers, low, even relatively low sensitivity speakers. And it always comes through like a champ. But as we used to say in the 60s, there's no substitute for cubic inches. So yes, the more powerful amp, it's not that it will play louder. It's not about more watts equals louder necessarily. It's that more watts gives you more kick to it, more punch, more impact. Not that a 2 watt amplifier or a 9 watt amplifier is all about impact, but on a relative scale it is, right? So yes, the 9 watt amplifier in this case, the 8600R definitely has more impact than a Zen triode does. But in terms of the beauty, re the beauty contest aspect, they're not that far apart. I really, I just love the little Zen Trion. But if you're yearning for more, yeah, I think the 8600R may just be the ticket. You know, it's, it's like magic in a bottle. It really is, you know. Uh, <laughs> magic in those glass bottles and those 300 Bs is uh, definitely crossed my mind any number of times over the course of doing this review, of just listening uh, during the day, at night, whenever I had a moment to pop in the 8600R and listen to it, I did. So I spent more time than I usually do uh, on a review just listening for fun as opposed to listening and taking notes because it was that uh, uh, it, intriguing, engaging. It just always pulled me in. And by the way, it does have a great sense of tuning and tempo and foot tapping qualities. It could do that very, very well. I've been, I, I know I've used it recently, but I've been hung up on early craft work, right up to the Audubon album. You know, After that, I'm less interested in them because the way those records put texture and reverb and space and bass textures is really, really just keeps, it just fascinates me. And it was very much so with the TU8600R. It just did that kind of detail very, very well. Now, if I switched over to, let's say, the Pass Labs XA25, uh, which is a low-powered amp, but it's very high current amplifier, so it feels way more powerful than its 25 watt per channel rating would imply, that amplifier has more jump more kinetic and if I want to crank it and like feel like you know crank the cornwalls and feel like I'm in a club and play it really really loud 
Oh yes, the, the XA25 is a better amplifier for that. If you need the visceral aspects of sound reproduction, you just don't want to, you don't want just a head trip of listening to th something and thinking, oh, I can just, no, if you want like thump, thump, pound, pound connection to your music, no, with 9.2 watt per channel amplifier is not going to cut it. So here's one for you. So I was playing Laura Nero's Live at the Fillmore East recording. Now, uh, this didn't come out while she was alive. This came out relatively much later, much after she passed away. And uh, it's a very intimate recording. It's just her alone. And uh, wow, it's one of those, it puts you in that space. I, I, I keep referring to that in various reviews of feeling the room, feeling the space that the music was recorded in. And this is a, this wasn't recorded for an album. This was recorded as a board mix at the time. I don't know if they even called them board mixes in 1969. But anyway, uh, the engineer apparently just recorded it. And uh, here I am listening to it all these decades later over the Cornwalls and the TU-8600R. And that woman had that amazing balance of sounding vulnerable and also powerful at the same time. She just took you, took you inside her world as a young singer, songwriter, New Yorker star. And just, there was no uh, wall between her and, and her audience in the film more that day, that night. And here I am all these years later hearing it and it was spectacular. So then I wanted to change things up a bit. So I moved the 8600 over to this end of the room where I'm sitting now to play it with the Graham Chartwell LS6. That's the 87 dB sensitivity speaker I referred to earlier. And I wasn't, you know, as I'm setting it up, I wasn't sure what I was in for really, except that this speaker always sounds rich and warm and beautiful and, and huggable, basically. Uh, it's the opposite of analytical sounding. And so it was with the 8600R. So I pulled out, again, because I've used it recently for stuff, I pulled out the Rolling Stones Goat's Head Soup 2020 Remaster. And there's this track, this outtake, with Jagger singing this song. It's called 100 Years Ago. And it's just him alone accompanied by piano. Or maybe he's playing the piano. And it's so right there. It's like... Yes, he is there. And to hear Jagger's voice that uh, intimate, without all that stuff around, without a rock band behind him, or even a, you know, just him, sparse arrangement on, on acoustic piano. And it was, it was one of those, I've never heard him sound like that before. So in, in this space, actually, he was in this room. And I was super impressed. And then also on this same 2020 version, there's a live version of Honky Tonk Women. And there's a song that's been done to death. But, you know, I don't know when that recording was done, but it was, you know, I think that record is from 1975. So 1975 or earlier. And it was hard, man. It was, they were hitting it hard, the band was, because it's not just Jagger on that. And Yes, and I'm turning it up louder and louder. How loud will these 9.2 watts get me with these 87 dB sensitivity speaker? And the answer was, not bad. Definitely, uh, well, I would call, it, call the cops loud, but loud enough, absolutely. So in other words, what I learned is that, yeah, you can use this amplifier, this 300B amplifier with a low sensitivity speaker. And unless you're into playing really loud or crave hard hitting dynamics, yeah, those 9.2 watts will make you very, very happy. So I pulled out this uh, Ben Harper solo acoustic guitar album. And it's just, I think this, this was a, a COVID recording. It's just him alone, really deep, deep into this guitar. And it's not about dazzling you with technique, just a man alone with his guitar making incredible music. And that's what these speakers, the LS6s, do anyway. That's, that's what they're so amazing at, is just sounding like 
acoustic instruments on the LS6 solid state ore tubes just have a rightness to the sound. And with this amp, more so. Just more, more like he is right there. Right there. Yeah. So this has been a review of the L-Kit TU-8600R kit amplifier. Yes. If you're a kit builder type, you've been chomping at the bit to get into 300 Bs and you want something with very high build quality as in a made in Japan design, uh, this is the way to go. I mean, Herb Reichert reviewed it for Stereophile and absolutely loved it. Uh, there's a lot of other reviews I see popping up on the interwebs and on YouTube here. So uh, rest assured, this is a very special design. Speaking of special, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Hit that, that, that button right down there. When you do, hit the bell so you'll be notified every time there's a new episode. And then you can also check out, speaking of checking, check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash Audiophiliac, and I will link to that below. Now, I just ran the 30 and under audiophile uh, call for pictures thing that I do, slideshows, and I did it in two parts, and they were amazing, uh, and thank you to everyone who submitted. But now it's time for the old guys, the 30 and up people, to send in pictures of your system. Now, here's what I want you to do. Take nice pictures. No more than, don't, you can take, take a lot of pictures, but don't, please, don't send me more than two pictures. Because if you send 10, as many people do, I only look at two. And if you send 10, I might not pick the right ones to open. So pick the best ones, send two. Also include a list of what's in the pictures in the same email. Some of you guys send me the pictures, then send me a list later. Forget it, that ain't gonna happen, man. Because I get many, many hundreds of these entries for these slideshows and the idea of matching up the list to the, mm, no, please just put it, the, the pictures and the list all in one tidy little email and make them well composed pictures, nice pictures, pretty pictures, well lit pictures, because uh, appearance counts. They don't have to be expensive systems. High-end, a $10,000 system isn't more likely to be included than a $1,000 system. But the ones that I tend to pick are the most attractive pictures. I have to stress that because people send me a lot of schleppy pictures that are not terribly appealing. So the prettier the picture, the more likely it is that I'm going to put it in the show. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I really, really do hope to see you back here again <laughs> very, very soon. Bye-bye.